Hallelujah. How many know tonight there's power in the blood? How many of you know that the power will never lose its strength? How many know that the power that was shed on, the, the blood that was shed on Calvary that was so powerful to remove the, the sin of the world, to take away the sin of the world, it's still strong today. Hallelujah. How many of you felt that power this morning in the service when the Holy Ghost decided to show up and surprise us this morning? I, felt the, I feel the power right now. Amen. It don't take long when you get in God's presence. Hallelujah. That you start feeling a little bit better than you felt when you was getting out of the car because the power, hallelujah, is strong and the Spirit is here tonight. Hallelujah. See, we don't ever have to worry when we come into a church service how things are going to go if we just let the Lord flow. Amen. We don't have to worry about uh, 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 kind of the order of the service if we just get in here and have a, a, a spirit of liberty and a spirit of freedom to let the service flow. When they was playing that song this morning, you know, Brother David texted me this morning, I don't mind telling you, at 8 o'clock this morning, said, I'm not feeling good. I need you to preach. I need you to be instant in season, out of season. I was sitting down in my recliner at the time. I had gotten up this morning at 6.30. It had been an hour and a half. I had sat in the recliner and just prayed and read scripture. And he texted me. And so I got on up and I showered and I got ready to come on to church. and went downstairs and he just started trying to put, you know, an outline together. But God had a different plan. <laughs> See, if we just come in here with liberty and let the Spirit move the way that the Spirit wants to move, amen. He's going to take care of the rest of it. Somebody said, Lord, let you off the hook this morning. I said, I was ready for whatever he wanted to do. They played that song this morning. And the, and the singing kind of stopped momentarily. And, and you could tell that the Spirit was just ready to move and ready to do some things in here. And, and I stood right there thinking, I'm, the, I, I, I'm supposed to deliver the message this morning. I, I feel like somebody ought to come up here and, and, and grab the mic and kind of direct us on what we should do next. And I... I stood right there and said, God, tell me what to do next, God. Corey grabbed the microphone. I just did the right thing. He didn't tell me to do anything, so I didn't do nothing. I just stood right there. He told Corey to do something. He told Brother, come on now. He told Brother, Brother Howe didn't know he was coming to church. He got up this morning, amen. I mean, that is just beautiful to me. I need to get somebody. I hadn't directed anybody tonight. I just need to get somebody to help me take the offering up. Hold him, if you will. Brother Dennis, if you will help. Corey. I don't know why it is, but it's about every church you go to. You run about half on Sunday night than you do on Sunday morning. You know what? That's okay because those that are here tonight, I'm not... I'm not saying people that aren't here aren't hungry for God. But I'm saying I know that you're here because you're hungry for God. Amen. And I'm not worried about the number here tonight. Because I'm going to preach what God's given me to preach. And somebody's going to be touched and blessed and encouraged by it. Even if it's me. Because His Word won't return unto Him void even if it's me tonight. Amen. Brother Holt, pray over the offering, please.
Taylor, you still have the scripture I gave you this morning? All right, just have those ready. If you'll turn to your, into your Bibles if you want to, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. And while you're turning there, I'll share a story with you. Um, I'm just going to share from my heart tonight. I'm going to tell you the night that I felt called into the ministry because something happened here this morning that reminded me of that night. It was uh, this summer, be 15 years ago. Um, I was at a camp meeting over in Mississippi. Um, my grandfather, you know, so many of you know, everybody here knows he was a pastor for 50 plus years. And that night, I believe what they were recognizing, he didn't preach that night at the camp meeting. He was being recognized, I think it was for his 40th anniversary uh, in the ministry in Mississippi in the Church of God. And so I drove there that night, you know, mainly to be in service with him. Um, to be in the presence of God and to hear the preaching and to be in church. But I drove over to Jackson, Mississippi um, on a Friday afternoon just to, because they were honoring my grandfather. And um, singing was awesome. Singing was anointed. The preaching was anointed. We were sitting in the back of the church, and uh, there was an altar service going on, and the choir had remained. They had so many people there, the choir had to stay in their, their seats uh, that night. And... Uh, and it's altar service is going on, and the choir is singing again at the end of service. And my family, we're kind of sitting on one of the back couple of rows, I'm not sure. And really, just to be honest with you, we're talking amongst ourselves, and we had, none of us had got up and gone to the altar service. And a lady come out of the altar, I mean, excuse me, out of the choir. I've never seen her before in my life, but she walked straight to me. I know that the Holy Spirit had told her to come to me, and she pointed somebody out, another lady that was standing there was a bunch at the altar praying. There was one lady standing about 15 foot off to the side of the altar service, just standing, praying, crying uh, by herself. She said, the Holy Spirit just told me to come tell you that you need to go lay hands on that lady right there. Pray for her. Never laid my hands on anybody and prayed for her before. And um, so... I made my way to her, you know, nervously made my way to her. Y'all just give me a minute. Father God, I just ask you right now, Lord, to touch God, Lord, his head, God. Father, I just ask you right now, Lord, to deliver, God, the pain, Lord, God, that's going, God, through his skull, God, in his neck area right now, God. Father, I pray, Lord, that there's nothing, God, but a bump, Lord, and a bruise, God. And I just ask you, Lord, God, for your power and your glory to be manifest, Lord, God, for that child right now, Lord, God, who God has made his way over, God. Lord, to be in your presence, God. He doesn't understand, God, what's happening here tonight, God. But, Lord, he knows that, God, it just feels good, hallelujah, to be in your presence, God. And I ask you to touch him right now, God. Touch, Lord, the remainder of this service, God. Hallelujah. And, God, we just rebuke, God, any way, Lord, that the devil would try to distract, God, and discourage us, God. But tonight, God, we just ask you, Lord, to manifest yourself, God, in your presence, your spirit here with us tonight, God. We thank you, Lord. There's ways to overcome distractions. Take it to God. Take it to the Word of God. Look. <laughs> Give him praise, everybody. Give him praise right now. So anyway, I went, I went to this lady, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was going to say, but I, I, I felt compelled to go all my life uh, you know, being raised um, as the oldest grandson and my father, my grandfather being a minister, I was told that I was to preach, you know, from my, by the time I was his size, I'd been told, you know, you're going to preach one day, you're going to preach one day. And uh, so, you know, as I began to get older and I began to get involved in church a little more and, and, and youth, I want you to hear me tonight. Don't ever think it can't be you. Don't ever think it can't be you. Don't ever think that you're just this person or just that person because you're a child of God and it's endless what God can do in and through you. Amen. So don't ever think that. But I can remember one time, and I'm kind of interrupting this story to kind of tell you what it was like for me coming up in a small country church where we only run about 20 people most of the time, and we were lucky if somebody visited that knew how to play the piano. And so they would get up there with a visiting piano player and without any practice, and we would do the best we could to, to sing songs unto God, but it was pleasing to him no matter what it sounded like to us. Amen. So... Um, I get up one night, I'm about 11 or 12 years old, and I get up to testify in church. And um, you see, back then, and I don't know how often, how many of you do this now, you know, you young boys and even girls, but 
Back then, I liked to squirrel hunt. And I, my daddy had got me a single shot, uh, crack barrel 410 shotgun, and I used to go around and collect Coke bottles. And I could save up. You get 10 cents at the little general store there in town. You get 10 cents per bottle, and I collect Coke bottles. And this man was nice enough to open up a 25-pack of shotgun shells and let you buy them one at a time if you had a quarter. So I'd save up enough Coke bottles so I could buy myself three or four shotgun shells. And on Saturday morning, I'd get myself up at 6 o'clock, and I'd go give me a couple of squirrels, and I'd still be back home eating cornflakes by 8 o'clock watching Bugs Bunny and Friends. <laughs> so, so I get up one night to testify in church, and my mom was nervous. She didn't know what I was going to say. And I got up there, and I, I, I felt guilt because I'd been hunting on Sunday. I went squirrel hunting on a Sunday morning, and I got up to church to testify about it. And, uh, but I justified it because my family needed the meat, and I was one of the men in the house. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> so we was eating squirrel. <laughs> but it was from those experiences, you know, be getting up in church at such a young age, you know, like you see Luke doing around here on occasion and, and others, uh, that they would tell me one day I'd be preaching. But, you know, when I got in my teen years, I really didn't want to hear any of that. Because, you know, I wanted to run and do what I wanted to do. So so anyway, I go over and I pray. Let me catch you back up. I go and I pray for this lady. And, and it wasn't anything about me, but it was, it was the boldness that rose up in me for that moment. And it was before I ever got to her, before I ever touched her, I got about this close to her, to her, to her back with my hand. And the Holy Spirit fell on this woman. And she began to pray in tongues. She began to run. She began to shout. And so I was staying at my mom and dad's house that weekend. Uh, and uh, my grandfather was starting a revival service. This was on Friday night. He was starting a revival service on Sunday. And I went to the revival service, and they had a, a in the altar, they, we were praying, and, and the evangelist that I'd never seen before, he just walks over to me. And I had prayed on Saturday and said, God, what's all this about? What are you trying to tell me? And this man shows up and says, Son, if you're supposed to be preaching, why, not, why aren't you preaching? And I shared that. Now, look, here's how the enemy had come against you. I want, you I want somebody to hear this. Here's how the enemy had come against you. Because I didn't have some kind of trembling experience with God like Saul had on the road to Damascus. Because I didn't see some bright light pass through my window like some people have had. Because I didn't have a vision of an angel that says you're supposed to be delivering the word of God. You know, what happened to me that, that weekend was just a confirmation of what I already felt in my spirit. Amen? And, and, and I had people that would tell me, no, not, that that's not good enough. Your experience wasn't good enough. You need to let God tell you that some human or some person is not supposed to tell you that you're supposed to be preaching. And so, you know, I just sought counsel from, from uh, leaders at Northport Church of God at the time and, and you know, got past that and, and accepted a call into ministry. So I just tell you that story tonight because I know, what's, I, I know how Brother Howe prayed over some of you youth this morning. I was in the altar service with him, and I agreed in prayer with him, and I want you to know that I don't care if you're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. It don't matter. It don't matter. David was about 16 years old when he slew Goliath. But you know, before that, he'd already killed a lion and a bear. And I don't know how old he was when he done that. So just don't think that you're just, Destiny, don't think you're just somebody that lives out near Ecola or Elrod or wherever that, you know, what are you, a sophomore now? Sophomore? You're just a sophomore and God can use you. And he wants to. Logan, I'm praying for you, brother. And the rest of you, just seek God and what he has for you in ministry. And ask God to let that boldness just rise up in you to be able to deliver his word. And it might not be from a pulpit, Lindsay. Riley, it might not be from a pulpit. But, you know, there's a platform wherever you go. Brother Davis taught me this. There's a platform wherever you go to be able to preach and, to, and deliver his word to somebody. It might be on somebody's doorstep, front porch. It might be at somebody's locker at school. But you win that person or those two people, or whatever God's got for you, you win that person. But you gotta have a, a pray, you got to have a prayer life to where you're sensitive enough to the Word of God that when He tells you to do something, you might not have time to take it to Him in prayer and, and spend an hour in prayer and seeking God at the time, but you got to know it then. So don't miss those opportunities when the Spirit of God says do something. Don't matter who's around you. Don't matter if the principal's there. It don't matter who's standing on the other side. When the opportunity is there, you got to seize the opportunity and reach that person that God's put in your path for you to reach. Amen? How many of you turned to 1 Peter? Okay. Just going to read 6 first. I'm going to read 1 through 6. I'm going to skip 7 and 8. Jump down to 9. And then we'll uh, ask the Lord to give his blessing to his word tonight. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Wherefore laying aside all malice 
and all guilt and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom, coming as unto a living stone, disallowed or rejected, talking about Jesus here indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones, you are a lively stone, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Skip into verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I was talking with somebody today at lunch, and I'm going to be using this scripture here probably in a minute, but and we quote it all the time, and it says, God inhabits the praise of his people. How many of you know that and believe that? Let me tell you what the scripture actually says. The scripture says God inhabits the praises of Israel. And we use this as God inhabits the praise of his people because I want you to understand what God said in the Old Testament to to Israel, what God said to, to Jacob and to Israel applies to the church today because they were his people. But the word says that if ye are in Christ, then you are the seed of Abraham. We are not Jewish, but, but we are joint heirs with Christ. And so when the word is said in the Old Testament to those Israelites and to God's people, that is relevant to the church today. You believe that? Amen. So God inhabits the praises of his people. Tonight I want to talk to you briefly about praise. And I want to talk to you about sacrifice. I want to talk to you about the chief cornerstone. Father, Lord, I just ask you right now, God, to give blessing, Lord, to your word, God. Father, what I'm about to teach and preach on, God, is not me, God. Let me not speak tonight with enticing words of man's wisdom, Lord, but, God, in demonstration of spirit, Lord, and in power, God. Father, this is your word, God, and I ask you, Lord, to let it go forth, accomplish, Lord, what you please it to, God, that it not return unto you void, God. Let it fall, God, on hearts and ears, God, that have been anointed, God, and prepared by you, Lord, to receive, God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. See, in the book of Hebrews chapter 8, you'll find that it says that the first covenant that God established is now obsolete. So what does that mean? That, you know, that means that to me that says that we don't have to to take animal sacrifices to an altar anymore. Can you imagine what it must have been like on the day of atonement when everybody had to bring uh, their their rams and their 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 lambs and their goats or whatever their sacrifice their their sacrifice was they had to bring it to a priest and he had to sacrifice these animals and he had to sprinkle blood on this altar and once a year he was the only one that could go into the holy of holies and we're talking about thousands of animals I don't know how long they called it a day of atonement but my goodness it must have took a month with all the stuff that he had to do and we don't have to do that anymore and and and, and somebody said once that. When I get to heaven, I'm going to go to David, and I'm going to ask him what it was like to kill that bear and, 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 and take the head of Goliath. And I'm going to go to Abraham and ask him how he must have felt when he had to take Isaac up here. And, and somebody said, no, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be that those old patriarchs of the Old Testament, they're going to come to you. They're going to say, what's it like when you're laying in your bedroom at night and the Holy Spirit just comes in and wakes you up at 3 in the morning and you don't got to get up. When you mess up, you can just kneel anywhere you are and you don't have to go get something and bring it to an altar. And you don't have to do all of this work. What's it like to have the Holy Spirit? See, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come home people and leave people. But because today, through what happened in Acts chapter 2 and the, the sending of the Holy Spirit, we have Him everywhere we go. And we can just kneel anytime we want to and get into his presence it don't matter if we're in an aisle at walmart and something happens and we get a little bit of bad news it don't matter if we're sitting in church on sunday night and we fall off the pew and bump our head we can just talk right where we are and we can take it to god hallelujah and he will hear he will honor and he will answer those prayers and he will bring restoration to you when you failed him when all you got to do is hit your knee raise your hand to god you don't have to do all of that work and go and gather up all those animals anymore. He said that first covenant was obsolete, but he said, I'll establish a new covenant. And we sang about the new covenant tonight. Something had to die, and it was Jesus Christ. Blood had to be shed. Blood's been being shed since the beginning. We talked about that if you weren't here on Wednesday night, how blood was shed whenever 
uh, 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 God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam and his flesh was opened up. We talked about after the first ten, whenever God used the tunics, the, the animal skin to make tunics to cover up the nakedness of Adam and Eve, how something had to die that was an animal. that yeah, And the blood, it was the blood that covered their sin, that covered their nakedness. Uh, God is, is infatuated with things dying, with blood being shed to cover up your sin. To bring restoration unto you. But Jesus cried, he died only once. He died unto sin once. But there's power in his blood. The song tonight was so fitting, Sister Pat. I thank you for hearing the voice of God. I thank you for your prayer time. And I thank you for your dedication and putting those songs and that music together. Amen. But God does inhabit the praise of his people. God desires our praise, but our praise to him is exactly, listen to me, children, or teenagers, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you children. Listen to me, youth. Listen to me, you, you, young men, and young women. I want you to listen to me. God desires our praise, but it's our praise that makes Satan angry. And I want to tell you a little bit why our praise makes Satan angry. But I don't want you to worry about making him angry because the Lord says he's our shield and our buckler. Amen. The Lord says you can run and take refuge in me. The Word says that you can abide in my shadow. Amen. You see, if you go to the book of Ezekiel, you're going to find where it says that Satan, when he was created, it talks about the instruments in his body. It talks about how beautiful it was. But it says that he walked in the midst of the fiery stones. If you look in the book of Isaiah, when uh, uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. It says that one of the seraphim took a live, a, a, a live coal or a stone off the altar and it placed it upon his lips because he was a man of unclean lips and he was undone, but that purged his sin. It was, the, it was that stone. Those lively stones today, they represent the Spirit of God. Read Revelation chapter 4. Read Isaiah chapter 11 when you have time about the seven spirits of God, about the seven candlesticks that are burning that represent the, 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 the seven spirits of God because God's Spirit is a fire. Amen. And because it's that spirit that the Lord has chosen to, to, he created us and he chose to give his spirit to us that can literally come in and baptize. Baptize was a word that they used to use uh, in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. Whenever they would dye a cloth, they would take a cloth and they would have this dye in the water. So they, I want you to get this, when they would take the cloth and they would submerge it, they would baptize it into the water. So the cloth went into the dye, but the dye went into the cloth. The Lord says, if I abide in you and you in me. You see, because we are baptized in the Holy Spirit of God, that is that spirit that Satan used to walk up and down. He walked up and down in the midst of the fiery stones. So what God took away from him, he created somebody in the image and in the likeness of God. You know, when he formed this earth, when he spoke this earth into existence, it said that he reached down. He didn't say, let there be man. It said that he reached down and he took some of that, he took some of that dust of the ground and he began to mold us and shape us and he formed us with his own hands because we were his baby. My boss man told me the other day concerning our paint shop. He said, I need you to get more involved down there. He said, I want you to take that paint shop and make it your baby. That's exactly, you know, when, when God formed us, he didn't just speak us into existence, but he took his time and he formed us in his image and his likeness. And then he took his spirit, he took that live stone, that live coal, and he put it inside of us. He took it from Satan and he gave it to us. And that is why Satan hates you so much. But it's because of that fire that burns in us that when we, oh, come on somebody. You know, they used to blow the shofar in the Old Testament. And the shofar had so, so, so many different uh, 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 responsibilities. Of, that there was two different kinds of shofars. I'm not going to go into all of that, but. Shofar was the sound of an alarm in some cases. Some cases the shofar was to bring in the harvesters. It was time to quit working in the field. It was time to bring in the harvesters. And we're not walking around with shofars, ram's horns attached to our belts today. But I'm going to tell you what, you can lift up your voice. You got a shofar that's right here that's empowered that the breath of that shofar is the, is the breath of God that lives inside of you, amen. And when you begin to, to breathe, when you begin to breathe out of those lungs and that shofar and you begin to shout praises unto God, it's like nails down a chalkboard in the ears of our enemy, amen. 
worse than nails down a chalkboard. And I don't want you to worry that you're going to make him mad so he's going to come at you. What I'm telling you is when you begin to praise, hallelujah, and you resist him, it says he's got to flee. It's the praises of God because the praises of God's what bring. It said he inhabits the praise of his people. If there's anything I want you to think about me is that I'm a praiser that I would get out and it don't care when nobody else is shouting. I'm not trying to say it's all about the shout. Come on now. But I'm trying to tell you, when I come into this place, I cannot contain the way I feel about God. It's got to come out somewhere. Sometimes it comes out in a jump. Sometimes it comes out in a run. It may come out in a shout, but I cannot contain my love for God. To whom much is forgiven, much is loved. Amen. He's forgave me for a lot, friend. Hebrews 13, 15, therefore by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to our God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks, giving thanks to his name. Word also says in Matthew and a couple of other gospels, a good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. I want to ask you tonight, what kind of fruit are you bearing? He said, praise by the fruit of our lips. That means everything that comes. That don't just mean in church. Come on, somebody. That means everything that we do. That means we should not waste a breath. That shouldn't be a breath comes out of our mouth. That comes from our lungs. That, that does not praise God's name. We should, we should stay away from evil speaking. Let no corrupt co- communication proceed out of your mouth. We need to quit gossiping and talking about one another. We need to quit whispering in dark corners. What we need to do is be a light. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The light shined into darkness, John chapter 1, and the darkness comprehended it not. It means that it couldn't overtake it. We are light bearers. We need to get out of dark places where we're mumbling and grumbling and complaining and whispering secrets to one another. We need to get away from that corrupt communication, but we need to let our breath and our lips bring forth the fruit of praise out of our lips. Come on. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, which is that chief cornerstone. A chief cornerstone would first be be set on its foundation, and all the other stones would be set according to it. They would be set aligned to that chief cornerstone. Where's Jacob? Jacob, you here tonight? Jacob's not here. Yesterday, Jacob came over and he helped me put up some posts. He helped me and Amy put up some posts. We're trying to build a a privacy fence, and I don't really know what I'm doing. We're just kind of going with the flow, and that makes Amy really nervous, y'all. Y'all need to pray for her. But he came over, and, you know, so many things that we do, um, the Lord can teach us a lesson in it. I was being taught a lesson yesterday. I didn't know it till this morning when I started writing uh, this outline together. But, the best way I knew how to start this fence was I come four foot so I make sure I'm on my property because I couldn't read the I couldn't read the, the plat. The plat map with all the numbers on it, I really couldn't understand. But I knew that that when I moved in there was a stake for a property line set behind my house. So I made sure I come six inches inside of that stake in both directions. This way and this way. And I didn't go no more no more than four feet off the corner of my house. And I set me a post. Went ahead and quick readed it and got it good and set right where I wanted it. I went down there on the other side of that, uh, down by that stake, and I put me a post. And I pulled me a string. And I made sure that those two faces was flush and parallel with one another. And I set that post. And then I pulled that string really, really tight. And I began to measure and I began to drill holes. So the next day, I did this on Friday night by myself. It was kind of hard. Flashlight like this. You know how it is. And, I, and I, we came back and we began to set those posts to that string. See, we set one post that we knew was right. That's like that chief cornerstone. That's Jesus Christ. And then that other post down there, that was me. I had to line myself up with this one. I had to draw a true line straight, and I had to line myself up with this other post. Now, all those posts that I'm going to fill in between, you know, that's just what's in between. What do they say about a gravestone? You got the birth. You got the death, you got the dash is what happens in between. All those other posts now are are those things, those events in my life that I've got to make sure line up 
between where I started and where he is. Come on. But I noticed we had a tough time yesterday sitting those posts. There were several times we had to take a minute or two before we could set the next post because the wind started blowing. And it blew that string off of those two posts or those three posts or whatever. And it blew that string. And we looked down through there and it'd be a half inch gap or more sometimes. We'd have to wait for the wind to stop blowing. Well, this morning, the Lord brought a scripture to my mind. Ephesians 4 and 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away about with every wind of doctrine. See, that wind started blowing and that string started getting a little sway and it started getting a little crooked. And when that wind starts blowing, that wind of, of wrong doctrine, that wind of corrupt doctrine starts blowing and, and you start hearing some preaching that you know don't quite sound right. I'm not talking about technical things where somebody might mispronounce a word or somebody might have a personal opinion. I'm talking about good, sound doctrine that we know is the truth. And, 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 that, and that wind starts blowing. It's time that you got to take a minute. and you got to seek God's advice. you got to seek God's counsel. You know, sometimes I'm flipping through the channel and somebody's preaching and then it starts speaking to me. Sometimes I'm flipping through there and, and somebody's preaching and I just have to turn it because it just don't sit well with my spirit. Amen. But what we got to do instead is we got to stand, therefore, with our loins girt about with the belt of truth. All the day long, we ought to sing songs and hymns making melody in our heart to the Lord. All day long, singing songs and hymns is not just at 1045 or 1050 on Sunday morning and 6 o'clock on Sunday night, somebody. But we should sing songs and hymns making melody in our heart to the Lord all the day long. Pray without ceasing. This morning when I came through the door, I think it was about 10 or 15 after 9 and the choir was up here and they weren't singing at the time. But I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt Sister Pat, but I heard her say to the choir, hopefully we've spent some time with him this week. And I had to give a good hearty amen to that. I couldn't let that statement kind of go unnoticed because hopefully before this morning, and it was obvious that people had spent time in the presence of God this week. Hopefully when we leave here tonight that you're going to take what's happened this morning and what you've heard tonight and you're going to dwell on it. You're going to meditate on it. You're going to get in God's word and seek revelation for yourself. But you're going to spend some time with God. Listen to you. You're going to spend some time with God on Monday and Tuesday before Wednesday gets here. And you're going to prepare yourself spiritually to go into the house of God. That way when you get in there, you don't have to sit around and wonder why Destiny's feeling something. Or you don't have to worry about why so-and-so's feeling something and why Corey's preaching the way he's preaching because he's preaching with an anointing or any that. But you can get your own anointing and you can get up there and you can begin to stand strong and you can begin to lift your hands in praise. And it don't matter if you're the only one in the bunch, amen, because you're going to get along with God. You're going to say, God, I don't, it, it, it's not about what they do tonight it's not about what they do tonight but tonight God it's about me and it's about you I've Hey, you, you might as well, because you done, you done spent the time getting ready. You done spent the time driving down here. You might as well, while he's here wanting to bless you, you know, he was here before you got here waiting for you to walk in the door. He said, any minute they're going to walk through that door. Any minute I'm going to be able to touch that light. Any minute they're going to come in. Any minute he's waiting for you. He's already out there Wednesday night because he's not limited by space and time. He's waiting for you to get there because he's already wanting to touch you and bless you. Don't let Monday, Tuesday go without talking to God. It doesn't matter if you're a minister. It doesn't matter if you're a choir member, drama team leader. It doesn't matter if you're a teacher. It doesn't matter if you're a leader. It doesn't matter if you're a musician. We're all spreaders of the gospel. We're all ministers for him. Amen? We know that David wrote multiple psalms while hiding in a cave. You know, there was a time when he had to flee Saul. There was a time where he had to flee Absalom. There was a time when he was in a cave and there was about 400 men that were stressed out and in debt that came down. But David, I'm talking to you about praise right now. I'm talking about, to you about praise bringing you out of a situation and praise bringing you out of a cave when you don't feel like praising. In Psalms 57, David wrote, My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. 
This was not in a good condition. I want you to understand, this was not why he was in the palace. This was not why he was sitting on the throne. This is not even why he was tending the sheep. But This is why he had to die because the mentor, the one that he helped, the one that he used to play the harp for, is now, is now looking to kill him. He's done throwing a spear at him a couple of times. And he's done turning his back on him. He's having to hide out in a cave and eat what he can eat. He's having to get by. He's having to sleep in a dark dungy cave and and he don't have a pillow to rest his head on but inside that cave he begins to write psalms and he wrote psalm 57 he said my heart is fixed and what i'm trying to tell you tonight if you're going through something if you feel like tonight if you're in a cave and your praise ain't getting past this roof i want to rebuke that spirit off of you because when you open your mouth to sing praises and to shout praises unto god he it's in his hearing and he will send his spirit to comfort you hallelujah because he's not limited by what you're limited by amen Psalm 142, he says, Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me. How many of you felt like your soul's ever been brought out of prison when you got saved? When the Lord came in and filled you, Carl? Felt like a release, didn't it not? Oh, man. Because we were guilty. We were guilty, but we didn't have to pay that price. Okay, the Psalm 108. Have you got Psalm 108 ready? I'm just going to read this, y'all, just because I like it. Oh, God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I want you to get that. I myself will awake early. I want to challenge you. I, I, I don't know why the Lord is leading me to the youth tonight. I believe this message can be for anybody in here, but I just, every time I bring out a point, and I didn't know it was going to go this way, but it's like I'm speaking to y'all. He says, I will awake early. He says, awaken the psalter and the harp. That's the instruments that we play to bring glory to God's name. I want you to play like a soldier. I want you. The one psalm talks about, and I can't recall it, but it says, teach my fingers to war. Teach my fingers so that when you play for the Lord, you're not only playing for the Lord, but you're warring. Because you're in spiritual warfare, and you're warring against the enemy. Amen. So I say, awaken drums, and I say, awaken guitar. I say, awaken keyboard. I say, awaken instruments out there in the youth room. I say, awaken instruments in the youth room. I say, awaken your fingers. I say, awaken early Monday and awaken early Tuesday. Awaken early Wednesday morning before you begin to get ready for school and you give God some of your time. And I want God to show up and he'll prove that he can make a difference in your daily walk and everything that you do and every footstep. I want you to wake up early and I want you to say, God, I want to first give glory to your name because we're supposed to put him first. We're supposed to give him the first praise every morning before we praise our Facebook. Oh, oh. Before we praise our Instagram, come on. Before we praise our Vine videos and before we praise all of those things, we're supposed to give God our praise. Amen. And you get up there and you and you ask God, you say, God, I want to send, I want to send your spirit before me today. I want your spirit to go before me so that wherever I go, you've already been there. So if something comes along that kind of shakes you a little bit, when something comes on and it just kind of aggravates you, it's okay because the Lord's already been there and he left instruction for you when you got there. Amen. Come on now. Get up and spend some time with the Lord. If you want to have the favor of God, you got to make God your favorite. Amen. Somebody say, well, you was on fire for God one time. You backslid, Brother Shane. What happened? I never made him my favorite. I tried to serve him from way back here. I tried to serve him and hold on to some of the things that was in my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, I battled it. I battled it, too. Don't think, you, don't think you're the only ones that's ever battled just because you're you. Uh, uh, what kind of music you ought to be listening to, what kind of crowd you ought to be hanging around. Oh, I got to hang around them people. I'm a witness to them. Well, I hung around them all right, but I didn't witness very much because I didn't have no boldness to go over there and witness to them. Sooner or later, I started becoming what I was hanging around. And I'm not talking about a teenager. I'm talking about in my 20s. But if you want to have that kind of favor with God, you want to have that anointing, then you make God your favorite. 
But he's got to be first in everything you do. I will praise thee, verse 3, I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great above the heavens, and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. We sang tonight about the blood reaching the highest mountain, but right here in the Word it says the truth reaches into the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above the earth. I want you to rise in the morning. I'm going to challenge each one of you. What time? Logan, what time do you get up? What time do you normally have to get up for school? 6.30, get up at 6. Meansy, what time do you get up? Get up at 6. Get up at 6. What's that mean? Go to bed 30 minutes early tonight if you want the same amount of sleep. Give God 30 minutes in the morning. Riley, Elijah, Destiny, Haley, Taylor. Give God 30 minutes extra uh, three days this week. I'm going to challenge you right now in front of this church. You give God an hour and a half extra, 30 minutes, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and I want you to see the kind of difference you're going to have Wednesday night. You now. I'm not saying that that it's going to affect everybody. I'm talking about for you. And then you can tell everybody else what you've done. You can challenge them to try it. Because this is what I've experienced. This is what I've done. I'm going to close with this, y'all. Adam, do you want to play something? Hey, I'm not going to be the only one to get put on the spot around here. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Some of you have already heard this analogy. Let me ask you a question. Anybody got a New King James Version? New King James. You got a New King James Right here. Anybody got a New King James Version? You got it? Psalm 42. Before you read that first scripture. Some of you have already heard this. I shared it on Wednesday night. It was shared in the the Wild Game Cook-Off. The speaker that came, Jason McLeod, he shared it, and I want to share it with you. Because it touched me so much. I mean, it really shook me. Psalm 42, read it loud, Corey. Stand up and read it. Stand up for the reading. Amen. Now, look, I want to talk to you briefly tonight about painting. And I'm just going to tell you, God didn't give me this revelation. He gave it to somebody else that shared it with a group of men uh, in January. But it touched me. I mean, it touched me deeply. I mean, it really grabbed me. It got a hold of me. Opened my eyes to some things. That word says that as the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants for you, O oh God. I want to explain to you about your soul panting. The story went like this. There was a man that used to raise dogs, and he raised them to deer hunt. He trained them to deer hunt, and he bred them. And there was something that he could do when he would go out and all those dogs would be in that kennel. And he could go out there and give some kind of a command and those dogs would know that it's about time to go hunting. And they would start ripping and roaring trying to get out of those cages. And while that's going on, you got this family of deer that's off over in the the woods in some field and they're grazing. They're just having a merry old time and they're eating. Some of those young deer there, never been hunted before. Didn't know what a dog was. Didn't know what the sound of barking was. Didn't know that there was somebody that was going to be waiting for them with a rifle or a shotgun or a bow somewhere. They were young deer. And so finally the man, he turned those dogs loose. And the sounds of barking coming as they got closer and closer and closer to the deer. Some of those deer that had been around for a little while knew what was about to happen and they scattered. They took shelter, but some of them didn't know what was about to happen. They didn't know that the sound of a dog meant danger. And so they just continued to eat. And finally, more and more left, and they left this one deer there. He didn't know what's going in there. And the, and the barking of the dogs and the howling and the growling of the dogs was getting closer and closer. And about that time when they came through the brush and they made themselves visible, something clicks inside of that deer, and he realized, oh, no, 
they're after me. And, and, and just as they get on his heels, something just jolts in him and he jumps and he does a 180 and, and the only thing you can think of at this moment is I've got to run. I've got to get out of here. And they're right there nipping on his heels, but he's pretty fast and he creates a little bit of space. But inside of him, I want you guys to get this. I want you to get this revelation tonight of, of your soul panting for God. All he could think about was run, run, run. And he just begins to go and he begins to leap and gallop and he's going, run. if I stop, I'm going to die. I can't stop. And all of a sudden he starts breathing heavy, but he just continues on. Run, run, run. And he goes up a hill and he tops that hill and he's on the way down and there's a there's a, a stream of water. And so he leaps and he thinks maybe I've leaped this water. Maybe I've got the safety, but it wasn't big enough to deter the dogs or it wasn't big enough to distract them. And so they just keep on coming. They've been trained to, to chase and to just go after. They've been th trained to relentlessly go after their prey and go after what they're trying to get. And that's what they're taught to do. And this deer is just thinking, oh, run, run, run. Run and he goes on and on and on. And it's like they won't stop. They just they just keep nipping at him and nipping at him and coming time and time again. And he can't deter him and he can't shake him. And he's going, run, run. That's the only one thought. If I stop, I'm gonna die. I can't stop. But all I gotta do, I want you to understand, run is the only thing that's infatuated in this deer's mind. Run, 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 run. run. And he just keeps going. And finally he comes to a bigger stream. And he, and he leaps across this big stream. It's, 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 you might even consider it a small river. And his, and his front hooves, they land on the other side. But his back legs, they're still in the water. And now he's trying to paw and he's trying to climb his way out. And he's going, grind, just go, don't stop, run, run, run. And the dogs are getting closer. And at the last moment, he, he finally pulls himself up out of that, uh, on that bank. And he heads up the hill on the other side and, and the dogs run and they try to jump this river and, and one of them lands in the middle of the river and the water carries it away and some of them were too scared to jump so they stand on the other side barking and one of them sees a spot, a little island out there in the middle and he jumps out there but he can't get no further and, and so finally the dogs have stopped chasing and, and this deer's still thinking, run, run, run. And then he, he gets to the point where he feels like he's a little... He's gotten to some safety now. And the dogs have stopped chasing. But the adrenaline is gone now. He's been running for a long time. And now all of a sudden, he begins to pant. And the air can't hardly get in his lungs. And his, his heart's beating so from the intensity. And his heart's beating so from all the running. And, it's, and he's panting. And now this new thought comes into his mind. He leaves the thought of run, and he, and he goes to drink, 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 drink. And he begins to search for some water that's good enough to drink, and he finds this old, this old mud hole, and it's, it's kind of dirty water, but he's panting so much for the water bed. He's panting so much. All he can think is pant. It's like he can't get air, and his mouth is dry, but all he's thinking is, Jesus said, drink of me. He said, drink of me. You'll never thirst. I want your soul to pant like that. My soul pants for God as the deer pants for the water brook. God becomes our favorite. We're His bride, church. And He loved us so much that He died for us. But He said, I hunger. He said, thirst for me. I'll fill you with righteousness. I want you guys to get into a place to where you're not challenged to get up at 6 a.m. on a Monday and Tuesday. And that goes for everybody in here that feels like God's speaking to you that you need to give a 30 minutes extra every morning before you start your day because your soul so pants for God as the deer pants for the water brook that it will not do for you to sleep and get up on time to get ready for work. It will not do for you to sleep and get on, get on time to be ready for school. But you're angry when you're not up. You're angry when, when, when sleeping late is because you're up 25 minutes before you got to leave instead of 30 minutes. 
because you want to be in God's presence. Because He's already, He's already there waiting for you to wake up. Why did you sleep so long? I've been wanting to talk to you. Why did you sleep so long? I've been wanting to hear from you. But your soul pants for God as the deer pants for the water brook. What a revelation Jason shared with us. And it, I hope it grabs you like it grabbed me. Say, God, I don't want nothing but you, God. There ain't nothing, God, in this world that could ever take the place of how I feel, Lord, in your presence. There ain't nothing, God, in this world that could ever take the place, God, of how you sustain me. It was said at prayer meeting the other night. It was said at prayer meeting the other night that we got to make sure our younger children, we got to make sure our teenagers have those encounters with God that will sustain them because mommy and daddy's word won't be able to sustain you. But you've got to have those encounters, guys. So thankful to Brother Howell's obedience this morning to come up because I know I've been told by different ones of some of the stuff that some of you are facing. You've requested prayer to me yourself and I know what you're praying for. And I can tell you he was on time. He was right on with everything he prayed this morning that God was telling him. So thankful he come by and us be on the arm and said, come on. I prayed in agreement this morning with him. I shouted and I prayed for some, but I listened to him. An anointed man of God for so many years. I didn't know him. I never went to church. He was never my pastor, but I've gotten to know him a little bit since then. And I'm going to tell you, this morning was an awesome experience for me. If you want to come pray, I'll leave it up to you if you want to come pray. If you need anything to pray over. But I just want to leave you with this word. Let that shofar within you rise up. Let that voice within you rise up. And sing unto God. Praises to Him. The fruit of our lips. Let it be praises to Him. And pray for that desire in you. Pray for that painting in you to become like that story you just heard. But let it be for God and His presence. Get to that place where nothing else will do. There ain't nothing that you ever want to do that might risk putting a stumbling block in between you and your growth in God. Amen. I'm going to say a dismissal prayer, but you're not dismissed if you, want, if you need to come pray. We'll stay and pray with you. Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for tonight, God. God, I thank you, Lord, for the anointed singing, God, that we heard. God, I thank you for those melodies, God, that were put together, Father. God, some of those old-time hymns, Lord, God, that we just gave to you tonight, God, praise, God, off of our tongue, God, and out of our hearts tonight, God. Father, I thank you, Lord, God, for your word, God, that we can go to, God. Father, we can ask you to lead us, God, to a scripture, God. Lead us to a story. Lead us, God, to a time, Lord, from something, God, that will help us. Lord, this morning it was read, God, that you're a very present help in time of need, Lord. And we thank you for those instances, God. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to take rams, God, and bullets, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, to an altar and sacrifice them anymore, God. But, Lord, God, we can make an altar, Lord, wherever we're at, God, when we just lift up holy hands, God. And we surrender, Lord, unto you, Father. We thank you for that, God. Thank you, Lord, for the service tonight, God. And I ask you, Lord, for those, God, that you've been dealing with, God. I know you've been dealing with some, Lord, throughout this service, God, who said, I need to make a, a stronger commitment, Lord, to seek in your face. Sustain them, God. Sustain them tonight, Lord. Father, we love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome to come pray if you want to pray.